bring this down a little back up. All right, hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name is Gabby. And my name is Mike. And this is the 2024 Hyundai Elantra preferred with tech package. But the key word there was 2024. Yes. What is going on this week? We actually have new refreshed and even redesigned models. Starting mm -hmm. off with the Kona, now we got the Elantra. What's yeah. next? Seriously, what's next? Um, I, well, let's keep that one a secret. That's a yeah. secret I'll never tell. <laughs> yeah. So as always, this is a live broadcast video meeting. No scripts. No nothing. We're just winging it. <laughs> we're, we're totally winging it. Yeah. But we're going to give you a full in-depth walkthrough of the interior and the exterior and everything that's new in this refreshed Hyundai Elantra. Again, this is the preferred with trend package. Now, as we receive more models, we will, of course, film them as well, too. So stay tuned for that. Another reason to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. Uh, we do these videos every single weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and they're always in a live format. So if you want to join us in real time, be sure to tune in at 2 p.m. I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, we always have a long intro in these videos as well, too, if you are new here. So skip to the three or four minute mark. That's when we'll actually start talking about the car. If you want to stick with us now, though, hey, <laughs> welcome. So me and Mike typically go over the same intro. I'm going to yes. let Mike take the lead on that. All right. Okay. So we do these videos for three reasons. The first reason, um, if you own a Kia or a Hyundai and you want to learn more about your vehicle, uh, this is obviously the channel to be. We do full walk arounds, exterior, interior, technology, performance, um, how to's and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, reason two, if you are looking to buy a vehicle and you haven't considered a Kia or a Hyundai, we definitely want you to consider us Yeah. Okay, for the same reasons as number one, right? <laughs> so we are going to provide you with a ton of information to help you with your buying decision and your journey. And hopefully it ends up at one of our three dealerships, which is the third reason, right? If you are, you live in Ontario and you're ready to buy our Kia or Hyundai, why not buy from us? Why not? Yep. we got three <laughs> locations. We're here at the Central Studio, Brantford Kia. I'm down the street at Brantford Hyundai and up north we have Owen Sound Hyundai. And obviously we'd love to continue to help you complete your journey after you've learned everything about the vehicle you want from us, from this video and various other sources on the internet. And I would love to welcome you in. Well said. Thank you, yeah. Mike. <laughs> now I'll also have Mike grab the camera yes. to show how to join a live video. So because this isn't like a regular YouTube video, uh, <laughs> there are a lot of benefits to joining us live. Number one, if we mess up or fail epically, you'll, you'll see it in real time with us. And it's quite funny. <laughs> uh, but other than that, it allows you to actually interact with us as we are filming. We dedicate a solid five to 10 minutes, sometimes even longer at the end of the walkthrough to answer your questions in real time. So whether it be about the vehicle, purchasing a vehicle in general, or I don't know if you want to ask us how our day was, it always makes us feel a little bit better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can ask whatever. Just keep it respectful, please. <laughs> so here's our YouTube channel. It's called the Kia Hyundai channel because that's what we film. We're experts. Yeah. We like to think on all things Kia and Hyundai. While you're here, if you want to hit subscribe, we are so close to 100,000. It really put a big smile on our face. But if not, you just go to our homepage here or our live tab and there you'll see our upcoming video. So today's video is, of course, the 2024 Hyundai Elantra. From there, all you have to do is click on the video itself, it'll load you in, and then here's where you can enter your chats. So, on the right side over here, that's where you guys can say hello, let us know that Gabby and green is always the best combo. It's my favorite <laughs> color. <laughs> and uh, just tell us what you want to see. All right, I'm just going to skip the ads here and we will get right into the walkthrough. Yes. So this is a refresh, not necessarily a redesign. If you take a good look at the front end, this is where we see our first huge change. This vehicle, or the Elantra I should say, is absolutely menacing. <laughs> it looks mean, it looks aggressive, and it looks very, very sporty. Now to match, the interior is also very driver focused. So if this is your car and you're driving, you're going to feel like you have the power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, everything feels like it's catered towards you and there's so much you can do in the main screens that really make it customized and tailored to your personal needs. Now not to mention I say it looks sporty, I say it looks aggressive. It is such a comfortable vehicle and it is very very good on fuel. 6.6 .6 liters per hundred kilometers to be exact and yeah. it's not even a hybrid. But don't worry there is a hybrid if that's your thing. I'm gonna turn the lights on and pop the hood so I can show you the engine and some of the performance specifications. Let's get those lights on first. Full LEDs, these things are super bright, and you can tell right away our front grille is completely refreshed. So it looks like we almost have a light bar all across the front bumper there. It's not a light bar, still looks really good though. <laughs> our LEDs themselves have a much more narrow, yet they're still super effective, super bright. Full LEDs. 
We have our indicators right at the bottom here. Ooh. And at first, I got super excited thinking there was front parking sensors. That's not what those are, unfortunately, but we still have a ton of great safety features. And the great news is a lot of them are standard. So although this isn't the entry level model, you're getting a lot of tech and a lot of safety in the entry or the essential trim. For our Hyundai badge, this is a little bit new. It is almost completely flat and it's stainless steel. So it ties in with this beautiful bar accent that's spanning across the uh, front end. We also have a blacked out front grille. Again, a very serrated, almost shark face. Yeah. <laughs> that's a horrible thing, this way to describe it, but shark is what makes me think of this. And also integrated into this vehicle is forward collision avoidance. So I always mention this while we're right in the front. Forward collision avoidance is essentially gonna pick up vehicles, pedestrians, and even cyclists. It's gonna let you know if you're approaching too closely. So if the impact or time to collision is closing and you're getting way too close, way too fast, your vehicle will warn you inside the cabin and even actively brake for you to avoid said collision, which is great because, I mean, who wants a collision these yeah, days? Exactly. <laughs> now on the topic of collisions, Hyundai has their very own steel. Crazy, I know. <laughs> now this vehicle is structured with something called superstructure, which essentially is Hyundai's high intensity steel, very, very strong, that is going to minimize damages or try its best to minimize damages in the event of a collision. Very, very strong body on the smaller vehicle. I'm gonna pop the hood so we can talk about the engine. Now the engine's unchanged from the previous Elantra, meaning it is still a two liter four cylinder MPI engine, gasoline of course. Oh, thanks, Mike. <laughs> so we'll take a look at it there. Perfect. It has 147 horsepower and 132 pound feet of torque. The transmission is an IVT transmission, but hey, if you had a bad experience with CVT in the past, let me tell you, this is different. That's why it's called an IVT and not a CVT. It's intelligent, that's what <laughs> the I stands for. So this transmission is extremely responsive, especially when you throw it into something like sport mode, which really, just amplifies everything, makes it a lot more fun to drive, much more dynamic. Where was I there? Oh, it's also very fuel efficient. So I drive a Kia Forte, which is the sister car and has the same transmission, same engine. I absolutely love it. It's responsive when I want it, but it is not a pig on gas, which no one wants right now. For our wheels, these are new wheels. They're 17 inch alloys. It's not black. It's more of a dark gray finish, hard to tell, but it matches our exterior paint color perfectly. Take a look at that. <laughs> and those wheels are an upgrade with the preferred uh, package? Sorry, the With the preferred, package? yes, yeah. but not with the tech. No? Not from what I've seen at least. But I will tell you what you do get with the tech package. So sunroof is one big thing. You're also gonna get things like dual climate control and dual 10 and a quarter inch displays, which I'll show you when we get into the interior portion. For our door handles, we have this little button here and this little button Oh my gosh, it will change your life. <laughs> this is probably one of my favorite features and it's not even that high tech or that crazy. Essentially, if you have the key on you, whether it be in your pocket or in your bag, all you have to do is walk up to your car. So get within proximity, press this button, unlocks the car for you. When you're leaving your vehicle, press it again and it locks everything for you. I never touch my key anymore unless I'm gonna do this one thing, which will also change your life if this is your first vehicle that has it. I'm not gonna close the door all the way. We have remote start. So we live in Canada. We have really hot summers and very, very cold winters. Mm -hmm. I can remote start my vehicle from the key fob or by using Blue Link, which is Hyundai's telematic system. So essentially from your phone, it'll turn on my climate control. And by the time I get into my car, everything is perfect. I love it. So great, <laughs> especially cause I'm always running late. <laughs> um, speaking of running, let's take a look at our mirrors before we head over to the back. So equipped on our power mirrors, we do have, oh sorry, it's not focusing. There it is. There it is, right here. That is our blind spot detection indicator. So essentially when I am driving and there's a vehicle in either my left or right blind spot, the corresponding mirror will illuminate to let me know that, hey, there's a car there. So you can see it in your peripheral as you're driving, just as a nice reminder that, you know, there's things going on around you, right? Now, if you're going to change lanes, that will beep inside the cabin to let you know Check your blind spot again, there is someone there or there's somewhere very close. And if I go to change lanes, my vehicle will actually give opposing brake force to revert me back into my original lane, avoiding a blind spot collision. A lot of things that you don't necessarily think about, but you're so grateful to have when you are driving. On top of that, this vehicle will let you know if you're about to exit your vehicle, so parking on a busy street, it'll tell you if there's a car coming up beside you. So you don't get your door ripped off or of course, injure yourself or another driver person. Back here, again, 
a little bit more of a refresh. We have our tail light that extends the entire body of the rear of the vehicle. Elantra badging at the very bottom, which is in a very futuristic and modern font. I think it looks phenomenal. Again, stainless steel matches our Hyundai emblem perfectly. Right over here, you have your backup camera. And here is a button that may change your life. <laughs> I've said that twice already. <laughs> Let's do a count. So this button is your release for your trunk. Give it a push. I need to do a better one. There we go. It opens up for you, which, you know, a lot of trunks do that. That's not too <laughs> crazy. But here's something else that the Cilantro will do for you. So when your smart trunk feature is enabled or smart lift gate, all you have to do is walk up to the back of your car, stand here for three seconds, your lights will flash and the car will beep to let you know it's, something's happening. It'll automatically open for you. So no more kicking under your car, maybe <laughs> losing your balance or putting your stuff down to open your trunk. It'll just open right up for you. All you gotta do is close it after. I love that feature. We hate it at the dealership though, because whenever we're talking to customers about the car, we have to worry about the trunk opening. So it's something you can turn off or on. All right, let's take a nice look at the exterior. Let me know what you think. It definitely is a little bit lower, a little bit wider and a little bit meaner, but still the same beautiful, great value Elantra that we love. I'm really excited to see the N. We haven't received one yet, but you know, as soon as we get one, we'll film it. We'll work our way. Oh in. yeah, I'm definitely excited to see the higher, <laughs> yeah. the higher trims for sure. All right, inside, not too, too much has changed. I'll have Mike do a quick pan before I hop in. So you can see on our sides over here, we have a lot of black elements that's broken up with this nice stitching along the door panels. We also have our speakers with this beautiful finish. So although this trim level does not come equipped with a premium sound system, your speakers aren't boring and dull. Nothing about this cabin is boring and dull. You may also notice the ambient light that is featured in the tech package. So if you want ambient lighting, you gotta get this trim or above. And I should also mention the tech package is an additional just under $2,000, so $1,900. All right, let me hop in. The Elantra, although it is a lower car, it's still super easy to get in and out of. I say that I'm also a shorter person, but we have a lot of tall drivers and things like the Elantra or the Forte, and they have no problem, especially once they're inside. This vehicle's got some space, some serious, serious space. I mentioned it's very driver focused, and this addition, so this um, kind of cockpit arm or barrier, really makes it feel like you're the driver, and then they're your passengers, which, <laughs> I mean, every car does, but seriously, this is so driver focused. I love it. Uh, right over here, we have our brightness adjustment. So let's say you're driving and your dual 10 and a quarter inch displays are a bit too dull or bright for you. Give us a little push either to increase or decrease your brightness and everything's set for you. You don't have to fiddle with your menus or find anything in hidden screens. Super easy right in front of you. We also have our traction control. So to disable it, it will also disable stability control. If you press and hold it, steering wheel, which is leather wrapped and fully heated, meaning no matter how you like to drive, your hands will be nice and warm. <laughs> Sorry, that's so It's your fast. favorite steering wheel too? Yes, so the shape of the steering wheel. I feel like a lot of reviewers may not want to talk about the steering wheel as in depth as me. I, I could talk about the steering wheel for a couple days. I honestly thought about taking one out and putting it in my car. It's so comfy, seriously so comfortable. No matter how you like to drive, again, your hands will be warm, but they're also super comfortable. This is just an aesthetically pleasing and comfy steering wheel to utilize. Now on the left side, you have all your telematics and um, just voice commands, media commands. So I'll go over some of them. Right up here, we have our voice assistant. So if your phone's not connected, it's just gonna utilize Hyundai's regular help lady <laughs> assistant. <laughs> just below that, we got our volume control. If you give this a quick push down, it's gonna mute whatever it is you're listening to. Phone button right below. So that is of course gonna be utilized to answer phone calls or just trigger your phone menu. This star button is empty when you first get your vehicle. However, when you preset that, you can do whatever you want with it essentially. I have mine set to decline or end a call just because I think it makes sense being right beside the answer button. But you can have that go straight to Sirius XM, straight to your navigation, whatever you want. That again is what makes this vehicle so driver focused. <laughs> oh, what happened there? Uh oh. Oh, it's shut off? Maybe. Here, we'll just manually yeah, hold it for bad. a second. I gotta hold it. Nice, okay. <laughs> um, it's uh, live, guys. Yeah, it's so live. Honestly, please, 
don't forget to like, comment, subscribe yes. so we can maybe get a gimbal. <laughs> <laughs> On the right side over here, we have our driver controls. So right up here is our cruise control button. This is what you're gonna use to turn on or off your cruise. Set your speed with these toggles here and then pause or restart your cruise control right over here. On the left, this is illuminated, so sometimes it's hard to pick up on camera. It looks like a steering wheel with lanes beside it. That is going to turn on or off your lane keep and lane follow assist. Here's a little hack. If you press and hold it, it's gonna allow you to shut off or turn on both systems. So I'm gonna hold it. And now we got our lane keep assist gone. Sorry, there's a glare right where I'm trying to show it. There we go. Press and hold it again, comes back on. Press it quickly, you get lane follow assist. Press and hold, lane keep is gone. There you go. Two controls, one button, just different little commands. I'm gonna have Mike join me on the passenger side and we'll go through everything else. You know, I can't let go of this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, look, hey. Pokeroo. I'm gonna go loud for a little bit because this door has to open for a delivery truck. Sorry. Okay. That's oh, I thought good. you were gonna start the, uh, the motorcycle, man. No, no, that's not it. <laughs> Come All right. on, give the viewers what they want. Your finger's not in the camera, right? No. No, okay. <laughs> it looks like it from here. All right, hey. I don't know if you guys can tell, but you're totally blocked off from me. I Mike, know. Mike, go try to turn on your heated seats. I can't. Oh. I can't let go of this. So I can't go, let go of the I camera. I can't let go of the camera. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move my arms over Hold to on, the wait. passenger I area. I can do something. Okay, here we go. Okay, turn on your heated seat. <sighs> <laughs> no, I'm I could go over here and do it. Yeah. Boom. So, although it may look a little funny at first, it's totally not an issue. It's something you definitely have to work around, but hey, it's that all That was actually funny, a little sneak. <laughs> a little, little sneak. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. That's my only, yeah, I guess, for, complaint, but... Okay, I'll tell you, for the passenger, I really feel like, yeah, I'm closed off a bit. Okay, that's okay. I mean, for the driver, it's way better when yeah. you're on that side too. But here, yeah, for the passenger, it's a little different. I mean, I have to kind of come over. Not a big deal, guys. But you do get this nice little pocket still, yeah. right? And space-wise, for the passenger, there's still so much space. You just don't feel like you have total access mm -hmm. to this area. You still do. It's just a little a little blocked off. Hey, it's okay. Passengers are lucky they're getting driven yeah. anyway. Yeah, you guys are lucky to be in this car. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, let's get back into it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is our main screen, so it has built-in navigation and Sirius XM. Your home screen looks a little something like this with a glimpse of your nav here, date and time, and then also your media. We'll slide over. Over here, you can select anything from these menus, like your map. Open that up. You can see what's around you, and it even gives you points of interest. So if I scroll up our street a little bit, you can see we have a Tim's and a Subway. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> when we go to our nav menu that's where we can again search for places save addresses as home work favorites whatever you like best under setup this is where things get really personalized really customized and very much again drivers focused we'll go to vehicle right over here driver assistance and here i can play around with all of our safety settings and menus so i can easily turn on or off my forward safety which again is my forward collision avoidance lane safety blind spot safety and even exit safety. That's what I spoke about where your vehicle will let you know if it's safe to exit your vehicle if you're parallel parked on a busy street. On top of that, we also have parking safety. So if I'm reversing my vehicle out of a busy parking lot and let's say there's two giant trucks or anything beside me, I may not be able to see what's going on. If anybody's walking behind, if anybody's driving behind, my car will though, and it will actually actively brake for you if it senses the risk of a collision, which again, I've had happen to me, it's terrifying, but I'm so glad it happens. The, the braking. No, the braking, not the collision. Yes. <laughs> I've never been in a rear collision because of that. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, it saved me. It made me feel like it kind, of, it kind of woke me up like, hey, man, you need yeah. to pay attention. Yeah. You know, a couple of times. Yeah. So. It's something I'm very glad we have. Yeah. <laughs> right over here, we have some physical buttons. And thank goodness for physical buttons. I'm someone, although I am tech savvy, I hate scrolling through screens, especially while I'm driving, and I hate getting my passenger to go do stuff for me. I can just quickly press media, radio, navigation, whatever I'd like, and I am right to that menu. You also have a favorite button, so if there's a... I can't speak anymore. I'm done. <laughs> this video Another is done. special, a if, secondary special if thing. If there <laughs> is a certain feature or yeah. menu you utilize quite often, you could preset that to be your favorite button, and every time I press that, that's what it's going to take me to. You can always reset it or make it do something else or reprogram it. And it's a secondary, so that yes. would be different than that one. Yes, exactly. Perfect. So two separate ones. Right down below, this again is um, only available on the tech upgrade and above. It's a dual climate control system. So essentially, I can set my temperature to whatever I like, and my passenger can have theirs set separately. 
or I can press sync and everything's the same and everyone's happy. Maybe. <laughs> Over here we have our heated steering wheel button. Give that a push. Your steering wheel heats up. Heated seats, both for driver and passenger, three different levels for both. Front defrost, rear defrost, recirculated air and pressure. Down here is gonna be a little bit hard to film just because of how dark it is, but we have a 12 volt on the oh, left. I got it, yeah. A USB in the center, and this is what you're gonna use for your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then a USB-C on the right. So again, faster charging, very convenient. I like it. Down over here is our transmission or gear shift. Again, although it is an IVT, it operates as a regular automatic. This is a regular gear shift. If you want to switch it into manual mode, I say manual, because of course it's not a manual transmission. This will allow you to utilize the gear shift to either increase or sorry, increase upshift or downshift your gears manually. All right, put that back into park. I might grab the camera from you real quick, you Mike. You can't. It's, I can't. The, the holder is dead, so it's... If okay. I <laughs> drop, if I let go of this, it's going to flop. It's done. All right, we're going to try to film this. I'll get it. So I'll I get might it close. have to. Drive so, mode select. If I give this a push, it. it's going to allow me to cycle between three different drive modes, being normal, sport mode, and smart mode. And check that out. Our gauges change with the drive mode, which also... Wait, let me close my door somehow. <laughs> Cause so it's completely dead. Yeah. Sorry guys. It's okay. It's okay. So I actually have to hold it with my hand, but two hands. The button right below is our park view camera. So if I give that a push, it presses. I just saw Mark Shellard asked about smart mode. So I'll explain what that does. Smart mode is essentially going to adapt to what you're doing. So it doesn't remember your driving habits, but it's going to change with what you're doing in the moment. Instantly. So, yeah, instantly. So as soon as I hop on the highway, obviously I'm gonna probably give my vehicle a little bit more gas, a bit more acceleration. My car is gonna temporarily switch into sport mode to allow for that extra power, that extra speed for acceleration, the sensitivity that you're asking for from the throttle. As I ease off the gas or as I'm just driving regularly in the city, it's going to put me into a normal or eco-conscious mode that's going to give me a bit better fuel efficiency than if I were to just be driving in sport mode all across the city. So again, sport mode is going to be a bit more fun, a little bit more sensitive to your throttle inputs, and normal and smart mode are going to be more efficient. Now you can still drive extremely efficiently in sport mode if you like that sensitivity like me. It's always in that mode regardless and your car will still be very efficient. All right. Speaking of sport, handbrake, which means you can do handbrake turns. In the winter. What more could you ask for? Yeah. <laughs> you can do handbrake turns whenever. No, but seriously, it is great to have an actual manual electronic, manual electronic, <laughs> a manual parking brake because you can adjust the amount of brake force that you need. Now, when you have an electronic parking brake, it's either on or it's off. So I do, I do prefer this in some instances. It's a lot more fun, I'll say. <laughs> Here's our cup holders. So speaking of fun, check this out. You can take it out. <laughs> so this is essentially going to just shorten the uh, depth of the cup holder. This is great if you often get smaller drinks or if you have a smaller cup, because I don't know if you know me, <laughs> but um, I always usually get a smaller coffee and sometimes the lid can kind of lift off the lip of the cup holder and then you just have spills everywhere and your cup holders are oh. kind of hard to clean. I thought it was like, I'll put change and stuff in here. And, but I mean, if I could. have two drinks, I'll put it in the side. Yeah. You know that side cup and then I'll put the two drinks yeah. here. So No, you, you could I do guess, that. I guess, yeah. But shorter cups, yeah, the lip will start to fall off if it's sitting on the edge of the cup holder. So real world application, what can I say? And then back here we do have our center console. Mm -hmm. I might open the glove box I'll for get you. it. I could get it like this. Okay. <laughs> this is pure manual right now. Okay, so not too much to say here. Same old glove box, of course. You know, you won't need uh, your gloves, so you'll use this because you've got that heated steering wheel all the way around. But there's one thing in here we just noticed, and I'll let you kind of talk about that. Sorry, it's a whole bunch of stuff there, but <laughs> here you got your manuals, French and English. This is a, a, a license plate holder for the front, so it shouldn't be in here. And of course, yeah, I mean, there's not much I can say about the glove box, but it's my part, so I do it. <laughs> All right, so with our new Hyundai keys, unfortunately, the manual key is not integrated inside. So there's no slot that you could push to release the real key. That's why Hyundai and a couple Kia models will give you the key separately. So we'll take a look there. There's a key in a little sheath. You pull out and you may think, where do I put this? Because there's no ignition. I can't turn over my car. Mm -hmm. What do you do when your car is dead? I'll show you. Let's hop out for a second. 
I'm actually going to learn this too now <laughs> for the first time. All right, so if your key fob dies or if your vehicle's battery dies, you can't get into your car with your regular key fob. You're gonna utilize the main key and push on this little indent right underneath your door handle. This is going to, I don't know if I should actually do it just because I don't want to slip. It's hard to do it with one hand. Ah. Is it the right way? Turn the key around? <laughs> I can't do it right now. Wait, it's, do you have to, no? I thought, no, 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 because no, then that to. would defeat the purpose. <laughs> okay, well, the door's not closed right now anyway. Yeah. Essentially, you're just going to pop that off, and there's an actual key slot like what we'd have in our older vehicles or our vehicles without keyless entry. Um, from there, once you're in the vehicle, all you have to do is make contact with the key fob to the start button, and it will start your vehicle, unless your actual vehicle's battery dead. Battery is dead. In that case, you got to boost it. Dead. But at least yeah. you're in now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll talk about the back seats. Okay, let me go back around. Oh, you can do it here, Mike. Yeah, why not? I'm going to show everybody the reflection of what's going on here. So the, the gimbal's dead. I have to, like, hold it. So you see I'm <laughs> holding it, too. All okay. right. Now, in our main seats, these are cloth seats, so they kind of allow you to almost sink into the seat. Very, very comfortable. Tons of space. So although this is considered a compact vehicle, there is a ton of room. Seriously, lots of leg room. Mm, and that. that's <laughs> um, there is some space underneath the seat for your feet as well. I'll move over to the far right side so I can show you what the middle seat looks like and then also what kind of amenities we get back here. So right in the back of our center console area, we do have two USB-Cs, meaning that none of your passengers should have a dead phone unless they forget their cable. In that case, I don't know what to tell you. Um, now in the middle, we don't have a pull down armrest cup holder situation but we have a very, very comfortable seat. And on our doors, we do have a little slot that you can put bottles or any sort of closed container liquid. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend putting cups in there or anything that can spill because it will spill. <laughs> and I also noticed that we did not talk about trunk space. So let's do that. Gabby, if the key is dead, if the fob is dead completely, can you start the car with the key manually? What do you mean? I, I, I answered that, yeah. No, you can't use like this key. You just use the key fob, press the start button, the push button, it has to talk. Touch. Okay. See, <laughs> they gotta the talk answer. to each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's just it touching where the start is, the yes. start push button. Goes. There will always be enough juice to start your engine. Yeah. Or for keys. an electric vehicle, start your vehicle. So it will reserve enough battery in it to do so. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, these batteries are extremely cheap to replace very, very cheap, and they last a long time. Some manufacturers, I know their batteries deplete really quickly. I've never had to change a battery in my key fob. Mm -hmm. and you also get a second key. Yeah, so, yeah. well, my second key's gone. I washed it in the washing machine. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> yay. <laughs> All right, underneath our floorboard, we have a spare, which if you're comparing the Elantra to the Kia Forte, there's one point that you don't get in the Forte. The Forte, you get a mobility kit. We got a Forte here, that's why I'm pointing Whoa. over there. <laughs> And then in the Elantra, you do get a real spare, which is quite nice. Space-wise, there is a ton of space. Um, it's all dark in here, so it's a little hard to see. But the depth, it is a crazy huge trunk, considering it's a compact sedan, even con not considering compact sedan. It's big. It's really big. Let's close that up and answer a couple questions. <laughs> I think we're already uh, past 20 minutes. I don't know how minutes. I'm going to do this. With the <laughs> oh, but. yeah, that's going to be a little rough. You know what it is? It's just going to have to be you. I'm just going to have to hold it. Okay. All right, this is a little different and weird, but we're gonna answer some questions from this perspective. Yeah. Okay. Um, if your car battery is dead, the car won't start regardless of the fob placement. Absolutely correct. So if your key fob is dead, yeah. you can still start your car, but if your car battery is dead, you're gonna have to get a boost or potentially a new battery. And that's with every vehicle. <laughs> yes, that's every vehicle ever. Um, let's see. Mark Shellard loves the digital key feature on his Ionic 6, awesome. It's a really cool feature. It's something I haven't got to try out because my personal vehicle doesn't have it, but we've had a lot of compliments on it. Um, well, new gimbal at 100,000K. <laughs> Please, guys, let's make it happen. Yeah, I am the gimbal. <laughs> you are the gimbal? I'm trying not to shake right now. <laughs> See how it's, well, it's completely dead, so it's pretty much like me holding the camera. I am the gimbal right now today is what I'm saying. 
Um, we got asked, do you know when you're going to review a fully loaded model? So this vehicle literally just got off the truck yesterday. I don't know when we're going to get something like the N-Line Ultimate or the full N, but whenever it hits our lot, it's coming straight here. I'm yes, going to grab 100%. it up. <laughs> So as soon as we can, as soon as they get delivered at least. Um, Mark said, like the video, there are 85 in here. Yeah, guys, if you're watching and maybe you learned something today, please leave this, please leave a like on this video. Yes. If you want to know more about starting your vehicle when your key fob is dead, me and Charlotte did a video exactly on that on both our uh, electric vehicles that have the pop-out door handles and then a conventional door handle like what we have on the Elantra today. Uh, super easy to do. There is a little bit of fidgeting with it that I don't want to struggle with on camera. Last time I, um, <laughs> I did it, I, it happened so quick that I dropped the key, it flew, and I don't want that to happen today, especially with the key fob that's not mine. Uh, MSRP, so I actually wrote this down, just so I don't mess up, and this is brand new. So the preferred is 23,799 Canadian, and like I mentioned earlier, the tech package is about a $1,900 $1 upgrade. <laughs> uh, let's see. When are you reviewing the base model? Again, whenever we get one. Yes, so when we get one, guys. this is our first one here. Um, let's see, I'm gonna scroll up a bit. Um, Akbar asked if all key fobs have the key. So whenever you purchase a new vehicle, you typically get two key fobs and we get two of these manual keys. So yes, they come with each mm -hmm. key. Um, See, this car is so, we just got this in that I, I haven't even split the keys properly. Mm -hmm. That's why they're in the glove box. Um, Joseph actually said, but if you leave it in your glove box, you're screwed. Yes. Yeah. So we, when the cars are sold, we typically give them together. And then we recommend to our customers, put that on your key ring with your real mm -hmm. key, just so you always have it. Um, <laughs> I see Mark doesn't like the giant egg key. I didn't call it the giant egg key. He did. Let me know what you guys think of the new key design. I... Don't know how I feel. I like it because it <laughs> reminds me of my little Tamagotchi pet when I was younger. It doesn't feel like a key to me. So this is the new Kia key, mm -hmm. which I think it's pretty sleek. It's small. It's not clunky though. It doesn't feel cheap. And it has everything kind of laid out nice and easy. This is, I think is cool, but I don't know how I wonder how if I it floats. It. Looks like one of those keychains you put on boat keys. So based on my personal experience with washing keys and them not working anymore, I would not recommend trying that. Please, disclaimer. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. The egg not versus, recommend. versus a detonator. I do like the old key. I'll tell you, like the, the, the one we had before. I do like the older one just because it mm -hmm. looks more like, I know it's just getting used to something that looks different, I think. Um, Mike and Gabby, if I'm not wrong, the Elantra is Android Auto. I, I love you, Gabby. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, so this vehicle has Android Auto, but it also has Apple CarPlay. There's no one or the other. They're, yeah. both, they're both available. Um, is the price the dealership suggested retail price or the MSRP or the sorry, manufacturers? It's the MSRP. So dealerships should, again, abide by the MSRP, plus, of course, tax and fees. And, of course, if you get a different color than the complimentary white, there is a 250 paint um, fee, but yeah, that is the MSRP. Um, Ronan, anything from 250 to 550 for the fob? Yeah, so my key fob to replace it was almost $600. Wow. <laughs> Needless to say, I did not replace it. <laughs> so we're just uh, hoping I never Pat, run into a situation. Are you, wa you watching this, Pat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and seriously, I tried everything uh, to make my old key work. I put a new battery in it. By everything, I tried one thing. I put a new battery in it, it didn't work. So I just called it a loss, I guess. Um, is the door an <laughs> open chime going off? Nope. No. Maybe there's just another sound in here. Um, let's see. Is Canada getting the free Blue Link Plus for the length of ownership on new 2024 vehicles? Don't know for sure. I'm gonna have to talk to some of our Hyundai guys. Mike, do you know that? I don't know for sure. Okay. We will yeah. come back to that question. Yes, we will. Um, tire size on this trim. Not something I have off the top of my head. Let's go take a look. Yeah, before my arm falls off. No. <laughs> I'm going to close this too. All right. Let's read it. 225 slash 45 R17. Oh. Very nice. If you can read it upside down. <laughs> it's up right there. up here. Yeah. Majesty tires, Kumo tires, sorry. I really like the wheels. 
I, I do have yeah, to say. <laughs> they're easy to clean, super easy to clean. I like when rims look that complex, yes. but they're easy to clean. Yes. That's a really cool thing. <laughs> yeah. I really do like the wheels. It matches the paint color perfectly. So if you are looking for this specific gray, just know that your wheels tie in perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, what is the boot capacity? So if you're looking for the liters, <laughs> I don't have that in my brain. <laughs> I'm not that advanced, but I can type it in the comments right after we're finished. There is a lot of space back there. I personally drive a Forte, which again, very similar in size, and you could fit a lot of things in there. I uh, will bring a 2024 when we get one in, for sure, yeah. but we don't have one right now on the lot. All right, 2024. This venue, is... sorry, oh, venue. Oh, sorry, venue. Someone, I was gonna say. Sorry, I kind of have, this is really hard, holding the camera with one <laughs> hand thinking. and the gimbal and yeah. thinking and turning my head. We're asking a little bit too much for Mike, but I'm gonna ask a little bit from you guys. If you're on right now and you haven't liked this video already, please consider doing so, so we can get a gimbal that works. Yes. Or maybe I'll remember to charge it. That's <laughs> probably what the problem is. Um, again, if you wanna catch us live tomorrow, we have a very special guest with a very special vehicle. We'll be live again at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and then every other weekday after that, as long as I am not sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're hoping for a lot more 2024s to come in shortly, especially on the performance side of things. Uh, stay tuned for that. And we hope to see you again on tomorrow's video and the future videos. Thanks for watching, guys. I gotta charge my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Turn this off. Oh boy. <laughs>